All right, how's it going, y'all? Today, I'm continuing my TrueNAS scale tutorials, and this one's going to be the super basic one to get it up and running actually as a NAS, and that is going to be how to set up your TrueNAS scale box as an SMB server. I'm gonna start by setting up some users and groups and go all the way down into getting everything running so you can connect to it on Windows, Mac, Linux, pretty much anything is able to connect to an SMB server. And this is for when you wanna have a shared file system. This is that standard NAS where you've just got, everybody has access to a certain amount of folders and you can choose custom permissions off of that. All right, and so just an FYI, this is multiple part series. If you've never set up a TrueNAS scale box before, check the playlist, I'm going through all of them. I think this is gonna be number three, maybe number two. I like starting at number zero, just the basics, going from there, long story. So the first thing we need to do is we need to make sure we've got a storage pool. So a storage pool is pretty much where you bring a bunch of VDEVs together, which are a bunch of blocks of data somehow or another, you stick them all together into one big pool. And so what I've done here is I've just set up as a single RAID Z1 pool, and that's the pool I've started off with. There, there are a bunch of other ways you can get the pool, but the important thing is to make a pool. And now we're going to add a data set. A data set is essentially a subsection of a pool that has data, and files in it. So a ZVOL is block data. A data set is essentially a ZVOL with a file system on top of it. So we're gonna add a new data set. And so this is going to be our share for our SMB server. So we can call it maybe family. So we'll say this is for our family for whatever reason. And so for sync, I would actually say no sync at all. If you want the maximum performance. So by disabling sync entirely, you will get significantly more performance out of your system at the cost of losing the last five seconds of files that were synced to the thing once the power unexpectedly goes out or if you have a crash. So that's really not that big of a deal. And for SMB servers, if you think about it, you're normally just sending over massive files, right? Then it does not matter if you lose the last five seconds probably because it's pretty unlikely that the last five seconds actually had a completed file and that that completed file is nowhere else. So I would really disable sync because it can give you loads more performance and SMB actually very rarely syncs anyway. So it's just easier to disable sync. For compression, LZ4 is pretty much what you wanna do most likely. If you are storing just video on there and it's only video and you've got a slower CPU, what you can do is the uh, zero ZLE right here. So ZLE just finds zeros and removes them and compresses that. But for most people, LZ4 is a great balance between uh, super fast to actually zip the files and compress them while also still being quite compressive. And then access time you probably won't disabled unless you have a really good reason you use it and you know a reason why. For dedupe, turn this off unless you really know what you're doing and you really want it. I will say there's a lot of great reasons to have it, but unless you really know what you're doing and you've got everything set up and I'm gonna have a dedicated video for this, keep dedupe off. And then for share type, we're gonna set it for SMB. So it's gonna go case insensitive because Windows does not understand the fact that a uppercase L and a lowercase L are two different letters in a file name. And then we can go into some advanced options. There's really not too much here we need. If you'd like to have a quota, that means you've got a, say say for this is a family folder, right? You're like, you know what? I don't want this to go over a terabyte because nobody needs to be dumping that much data here. You can do that here. And you've got a ton of options there. And then the other thing to look at is record size. If you are going to be on a standard SMB file server, having larger record sizes is not bad. So maybe 256 kilobyte, it totally depends on what you're doing. If you're just storing large blocks of data, then having one meg is actually not a terrible idea. So think movies and stuff. That's actually going to be your most effective size and it will make your RAID Z levels actually more efficient. I've got another video plan for that, but that's one thing to look at. If you really just want something that's gonna be decently fast and work for pretty much anything, you don't wanna think about it, 128 standard works well. So you've got some options there. I will be having a dedicated video on that though. And we're gonna go ahead and hit save. 
and it's going to go ahead and just build this data set. And so just like that, it's inherited on down. And so now we need to go ahead and start up our users. This is going under the assumption you do not already have users. And so we'll go into credentials and we're going to start with a group. Everything you should do, try to do it on groups because it'll make your life a lot easier if at all possible. So we're going to go ahead and start off by starting with a family group. We're going to call it family. And we're going to allow Samba authentication because we're using Samba. So this is going to be our family. And so now let's stick some people in there. So I'm going to create a new user. And I'll be part of this group. And we're going to untick primary group. And we are going to select the primary group of family. And it'll be at the bottom. And then any other groups you'd like to add in, you can do so here. So that's where if you want to have people in a lot of different permission sets, you start doing that here. And then we don't need any of these other settings really at all. And Samba authentication is by default. I'm also going to give myself a root access just because I'm me. So I'm actually going to add myself into root or wheel. And so now just go ahead and save it. And so now we are done. I disabled myself from root just because I want to make sure to show that this works even if you're not root, which you don't need to be. All right, and so now we've got a user, we've got a group, and so now we just need to set up Samba. So now we need to go into system settings and services. And so now we just need to go ahead and start up with the SMB client right here. And so we are going to start automatically and enable it. Then we are now going to configure it. And pretty much all we have to do is enable it. There's some custom settings down here you can get into if you'd like to. Auxiliary parameters are probably all you'd end up doing, but would not worry about that too much. All right, and so now that that's set up, now we've got SMB actually enabled on the server. Now we actually need to go ahead and create it as a share. So we go up to the shares and we're going to set up a new SMB share right here. So it's running right here and we're going to just add one. And we're going to select that new pool. And it's already got the things there. And we are going to call it family. And the default share perm permissions, you've got options here. Default should be probably fine. You probably do not need anything else. I would not recommend trying multi-user for NFS and also SMB. It's going to be an issue. So I would just say default. And then if you need to add in advanced options here, you can do so with the auxiliary parameters right there. And now we just go ahead and hit save. All right, and so now we've got the SMB server running. We've got the share set up. We've got our user and our group. Now the last thing we need to do is actually give our users permission to the share. So to do that, we go into view details down here and we are just going to select it and hit edit file system access control list or the ACL. So now we are in the file system ACL and we can see we've got some defaults here that we actually probably are going to want to clean up. So right now by default, every single person the built-in users has full control over this thing. So we're just going to remove those and we'll just save it really quick. Now we want to just be very strict on exactly who has access. I'm going to edit permissions again. Did not need to fully save it out there. And what we're going to do is we are going to add an item and we are going to say the group. We're going to say that the group is family. And so anybody in the family group will have access to it and they will have access to modify everything so pretty much everything they need and we will want to do that recursively because we are going to be setting everything down and so now anybody who is in the group family should have a read write to it and so we are going to save that and we'll go ahead and test it so now that that's all set up we're going to go ahead and connect to it so i'm on a mac so i'm going to just go into smb connect and type in the IP address. If you are on Windows, you can just do backslash backslash in the file explorer window and type in the IP address and go. And then just type in your username and password. And so just like that, I was successfully able to join family 
and I can make a folder. That's because I've got the permission set up in there. And so now we've got the basic share set up. If I had multiple shares, I would have multiple options there. But since there was just the one, it went for it. And now that's really all there is to it. We now have a shared folder that everybody has access to. It is just that easy. All right, well, that's going to be it for this tutorial. Go and leave any of the tutorials like see me make in the comments below. And have a good one. Bye.